What's up guys, welcome to Munchkins Gaming, where we take your gaming to the next level. This is Munchkins logging in to bring you another Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia video, and welcome back to another video guide. In today's video, we are going to take a look at the latest story chapter, Act 3, Chapter 4, Part 1, Lafinia Fight, and... Before we do start, as always, like and subscribe if you haven't already. It does help the channel and I would really, really appreciate it. And without further ado, let's start this video. Alright guys, as always, we'll start this off in how you're going to be dealing with the Lofinia Orb, which appears when the boss's HP reaches less than 80%. This does not disappear afterwards, and you can increase this by making sure that your party has no debuff. However, this does only increase it by one. But if you want a big one, you will need to cleanse or remove debuffs, which increases the Lofinia Orb counter by 15. Characters like Yuna, Balthier, Pinello, Seodor, and Mog are going to be very, very helpful. Now let's move on on how the fight works. First of all, let's talk about the recast ability. This applies a lot of frame debuffs, which can actually stop you from attacking as well. And I guess the most annoying thing about the debuffs that the that the boss apply is the HP attack disable because you can to a certain degree deal with like the blind, the stop, the the burn or HP poison whatever it is. But having that HP attack disable is actually really really annoying because first of all a lot of the cleansers will do some sort of Bray plus HP attack. So to use the ability to cleanse the debuff, but if it actually has an HP attack, you can't use it so you can't cleanse it. So a lot of people, I'll just warn you now, will be using Yuna as part of their party composition. Now, another annoying thing that they do is they do do a lot of HP attacks. And one of the other abilities that they have is called First Shot. It's not an HP attack, but it can insta-break you, which makes them gain a lot of Brave. And another more annoying thing, <laughs> it just keeps on piling up, is that they cast Kuraga when their HP is less than 50%. And they will also cast this once more when their HP is less than 30% after using Verse Shot Plus. So, yeah, this can be very, very, very annoying. And they actually get like an HP region buff as well alongside with this um, when they cast Kuraga. Now, the boss will also apply another annoying thing, another annoying debuff called aggravate now this will basically let them have a turn after your turn so think of it like a lot of people um say just think of el narsh's you know terror debuff and that's basically what it is you have your turn and they will get an instant free turn afterwards what i do notice though not all of them not both of them will get like free turns only one of them i think whoever applies the aggravate debuff like last tend to do it i'm not 100 percent sure on this but that's how what i noticed but uh yeah so uh another annoying thing and it just keeps piling up and hopefully this is the last one i believe it is and is when you do act more than 10 turns in a row they will actually reapply aggravate again uh, plus, uh, they will also apply like an HP damage resist down debuff. So, yeah, a lot of fun stuff in this fight. Alright guys, so we've gone through all the annoying stuff. How are you going to deal with all these annoying stuff? First of all, have patience. Unfortunately, this is not going to be something you can just run through. This Lufinia fight will have to you know test your patience it will test your patience and you will have to sort of uh just pay attention <laughs> to a certain degree so a lot, uh, there's quite a few things that you can do that can 
make this fight a lot more manageable. First of all, applying a lot of frame debuffs. This will just prevent the boss from actually applying their HP regen. And, and even if they did, you can probably easily push it off. Um, and if you don't really want to bring like the buffers or even in your calls, just dispel it. Find a dispeller that works for you. And hopefully you will only have to use it once because once it goes to less than 30% HP, it is only by chance that when it uses like the verse shot plus and you know having to cure again if that happens the most likely scenario is you are not going to have enough time or turns to actually beat the lufinia so um yeah uh other debuffs that you can consider bringing like hp disable like kefka kefka is going to be really great to bring her here because he has a lot of debuffs Plus, he can do HP Silence and Blind as well, which will make your life so much easier. You know, Arciella as well with the HP Silence. Uh, those kind of things are going to be very, very helpful. Paralysis, Sleep, and stuff like that will work as well since the boss is only kind of immune to most of his debuffs anyway, like the Aggravate and stuff like that. So, if you can paralyze it all the better um and you know you gotta time your bursts and your summon phases as well as they do get like um you know they do apply that aggravate debuff once you go like more than 10 turns so time those because if you don't they will have a lot of free turns and i'm warning you about that now now the last thing that I will mention is, you know, the tanks and healers. They're gonna do a lot of work for you. And I mean a lot of work. I mean, starting this fight off, one of the boss already has their recast ability up and that will be their first move. And so you will have to heal through, uh, unfortunately, because yeah, they get the first turn. <laughs> Alright guys, let's move on to characters that you want to bring in this fight. Honestly, the fight does not have any restriction or uh, you know a big restriction on anything. It's all going to have to do with your party composition yourself. Um, the spellers, the buffers, like I said, they're probably the best ones to bring along. Um, but uh, you know, there's really no restriction, so you can really bring anyone but it's just a matter of your composition. Now, as for the calls, the cults really depends on your composition as well. If you're gonna be hyper aggressive or if you're gonna be really defensive, I would kinda suggest go like cleansing a little bit. Um, so having Ferris that can apply a lot of debuffs and then remove the HP region buff as well, I think is probably the best one of the best ones to bring along um uh you know i mean the line can delete turns but you have to be a little bit careful with that but uh, i mean the line can apply a lot of frame debuff so uh, there's just a mix of things that you can do with this you know um so i would highly suggest just taking a look at your composition and and see what you know what you're lacking in your main party and bring the calls for it all right guys now let's take a look at some party compositions the first one is going to be the video that you guys are seeing von yuna setzer shantaro ferris Pinello for the call and then support i went with setzer and ramu for the summon this is a little bit overkill but god dang <laughs> <laughs> I really wanted to just, you know, st st like stomp my way through this. And this is probably one of the best ones. You can probably switch Vaughn with Titus here as well if you really want to. Um, but yeah, this, I just wanted, you know, I just wanted it over with. I didn't want to deal with a lot of things. And even with this team, you have to be patient. I had to reset a few times when it, things didn't really go my way. Um, you know, Setzer's Freeze is really, really good as well as, you know, I probably 
haven't mentioned that. I mentioned like paralysis, HP disable, and stuff like that. But Setzer's Freeze works really well here as well. Okay, so the next team is going to consist of Kefka, Yuna, and Leon. The call team for this one is Setzer, Warrior of Light, and Seedor, and Yuna for the support and Ramu for the summon. So essentially here, you have a very defensive cold team and you're going to take advantage of all the debuffs that Kefka will bring along alongside with Leon's off turn damage. You're gonna need a little bit of that since you, we only have 70 turns for this one. Now the last team I have for you guys is Titus, Yuna, and Kor, with the cold team of Warrior of Light, Ferris, and Seodor, and Yuna for your support, and summon, you have to go with Ramu here. So this team is sort of kind of like the same as the first one, but without Setzer. Uh, you're going to take advantage of course off turn damage here since the boss loves to do all attacks and do a lot of attacks anyway HP attacks core can do a ton of off turn damage which will really really help you out and Ferris is here for that HP region buff just get rid of that as soon as you can and I think you should be fine and hopefully they don't cast it again because there's really no way for you to deal with it once they cast it a second time all right guys so we're finally towards the end of this video and of course i'll give you guys my final thoughts regarding this fight this fight was a nightmare to me in jp and i actually forgot all about it <laughs> i really really did forget all about this um i remember uh, you know after playing this again uh, or just playing this fight again, you know. Uh, I remember in JP, I actually had to get like a Yuna um, call, I believe. I'm not a Yuna call, a Yuna support, if I remember correctly. I don't remember 100%, but I do remember like just scratching my head how I'm gonna do this. <laughs> Even though I had Setzer and Vaughn, and I did get Yuna's burst in the JP. Uh, version of the, the game and even with all those at my disposal I still had you know I, I still struggled um, I still had a hard time so um, after playing it for a few times I'm like wait I think I remember this fight I think I remember how annoying this fight was <laughs> I, because first of all um, you know the main team that I always brag about you know clearing a lot of the finia fights like cloud of darkness sets her and Vaughn didn't really work out because the boss keeps getting a lot of turns because I kept delaying them and I was like what the heck <laughs> anyway it didn't work out that way you know you can't use the my my um, I guess uh, stomping Lufinia team or I don't know what to call it but at the end of it all, I still managed to do it. Um, I think I, I went with the same team uh, as I did now. And honestly, I don't really want to deal with this fight. This fight is very, very annoying. And ultimately having only 70 turns to clear this and the chance of them using Kuraga, uh, you know, when they're less than 30%. Yeah, it's, it's very, very annoying. This fight is annoying as heck and i think a lot of you will agree once this fight is over is i don't really want to deal with this fight again i don't want to do this fight now i had to do it again <laughs> because i played it in jp and of course you know making videos to help you guys out i really had to do it so um yeah at the end of it all i think this is one of the hardest lufinia fights yeah, I, I would say hard, even though it's, to me, probably, it's more annoying than hard. So, yeah, let's just go with that. <laughs> so, anyway, guys, I think I'll end the video right here. Please do remember to click like and subscribe if you haven't already. It does help the channel, and I would really, really appreciate it if you can share this video to a fellow DFFO player who is struggling to beat Lufinia fights, and hopefully... This, can, this video can help them, and maybe they can check out the rest of my videos on my Lufinia guides. 
And yeah, make sure to follow me on Twitter and on Facebook at Munchkins Gaming. Leave down in the comments below what your team was, your strategy. If you, if I miss anything, leave it all down there. This is Munchkins logging off. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next level.